What's going on, everybody? Today, we're talking about CO2 lasers. We're going to talk about what is a CO2 laser and how it works. We're going to talk about why I got the model I did and why did I get a CO2 laser when I already have a CNC milling machine. And then finally, we're going to go over was it worth it? We're going to talk about all those things and a little bit more. So let's get into this video. What is a CO2 laser machine? Well, it is a reductive CNC machine, just like a CNC milling machine. It's taking away material as opposed to a 3D printer, an additive CNC machine. That's the easy part. How does it work? Well, through real life video and crudely drawn animations by yours truly, we're gonna go over how it works. To start off, let's look at the star of the show, the laser tube. Now these are long glass tubes that are filled with a gas. In our case, carbon dioxide, hey, CO2. And when a high voltage is introduced to that gas, you get an increase in energy which produces light. That light is then focused into a laser beam, which is shot out the end of the tube and into this first mirror. That first mirror then reflects that laser down the y-axis to a second mirror. And then that is reflected down the x-axis to a third mirror, which shoots the laser down the z-axis. That laser is then focused in the lens down onto your material to either cut or engrave. So if you spent time going through the CO2 forms, you're gonna see the main issues being aligning the mirrors and getting the correct focal distance for your lenses. That is the main hurdle when you get a new machine, making sure all that is dialed in. We're not gonna get into the nitty gritty, gritty of it. So let's move on to why I chose the model I did and why did I get a CO2 laser if I already had a milling CNC machine. Now that we know how a CO2 laser works, Let's look at the whys. The first why is, why did I go with an Ohmtec 60 watt, 20 by 28 autofocus CO2 machine? Well, budget, cutting area, wattage, light burn, and it can cut acrylic. And if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know how much I love engraving and in cutting acrylic. Let's talk about budget. Now, when you're budgeting for your CO2 machine, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have enough in there to get a chiller and exhaust fan. Now, other people are gonna say you're gonna also wanna get air assist and better uh, lenses. Yes, you will eventually, but just starting out, you're going to need a chiller. Make sure it actually chills and it's not just a circulation pump just circling the water through. And then you're gonna need a good exhaust fan as well, along with hoses. So make sure that's part of your budget when you're planning this out. Second, the cutting area. 20 by 28 is a pretty good size. Now, I've gone up to largest things I've cut so far are 12 by 24 inches, I believe. And you know, they're a little bit smaller because I'm leaving some room around the edges so we can hold down that material flat. But 20 by 28 is a good starting off size. And it does have two pass-through doors, so you can cut even longer, and you can do tilling as well. Now, the wattage. So you're going to see a lot of different wattage machines out there. Everything from 40 to 60 to 80 to 100. The smaller machines, the 40 ones, you may see the K40 out there. Watch out when you're looking at those. If you want to use light burn, you need to make sure the machine you're choosing has a light burn compatible controller. Uh, if you go to Ohmtech's site, you can see that getting a controller compatible with light burn on the smaller machines is an upcharge. So pay attention when you're buying your machine, if you want to use light burn, that it is ca capable of doing that. Wattage. Let's talk about wattage here. Why did I go with 60? Why didn't I do 80, 100? 
Well, within the bundled package I got with my own tech laser, which did include light burn in it, the 60 watt was again in my price range. Also, wasn't bottom of the barrel, wasn't top of the barrel, but 60 watts seemed pretty good. And from what I could see in the forums, people were saying it did a very good job at cutting acrylic at a reasonable speed for a CO2 laser. Before we get into the next part, if you're liking these videos and they're helping you out, remember to hit that subscribe and bell button down below to keep up with all the latest DE Hammer videos. All right, let's get to the next part. Now for the second why. Why get a CO2 laser if you already have a CNC milling machine? Or why choose one over the other? Well, each has its own advantages. So let's look at some of the advantages of the CO2 laser. With the CO2 laser, you are going to be able to get very small and fine detail cuts. And that's because the laser width, the dot that it makes, is very tiny. When you're comparing that to a router bit, you can only get so small before it's practical to use anymore. For those of you who have used one millimeter or smaller bits, no, those things are finicky and break easily. Also, a CO2 laser can produce phenomenal photorealistic engraves. Now, you can get similar effects from a CNC router by using halftone, but again, due to the physical size of the laser dot, you are going to get much more photorealistic results from a CO2 laser than you will with a CNC routing machine. Whereas with a CNC milling machine, you're going to be able to pocket out down to a certain depth. You're gonna be able to do 2.5 and 3D carves. Uh, you're gonna be able to do V carves for that type of style. And you're gonna be able to cut thicker material on a router than you would a CO2 laser. Of course, depending upon what wattage and lenses you're using. Let's say I need to carve out a channel for an LED strip. Hey, gonna throw it on my CNC milling machine. So if someone was to come up to me and ask me, Paul, would you get a CO2 laser or a CNC router? I would have to say, what do you want to make? Think about that long and hard. Do you wanna do leather? Get a CO2 laser if you're wanting to cut and engrave leather. Now be careful, some of those leathers out there can, when you use a CO2 laser, uh, create chlorine gas. So be careful, do your research on what materials are you wanting to cut. And then you can make a decision on what machine's gonna work best for you. If you're gonna be doing a lot of thick woods, hey, get a CNC router. I mean, if you wanna do 2.5 and 3D carbs, you're going to need a CNC router. Go with that. You can always add a different machine later down the road. Maybe not tomorrow, hey, it may be a couple years. It took me three years to get to the CO2 laser. So look deep into what projects you want to create. Then you can decide this is the right route for me. So was it worth adding the CO2 laser to the shop? Yes, yes it was. The CO2 laser has opened up a whole new material list that were not available to me before. Take this Star Trek TNG Enterprise that I prototyped out of cardboard. Now, instead of having to keep my fingers crossed that I made all my measurements and my design right and cut this out of wood, I was able to cut all this out of cardboard, fit all the pieces together and make sure it worked before I made this out of wood and realized that I had made some mistakes in the design process. Knowing I have this option to prototype in cardboard is a lot less stress on me and my wallet. Now this video is not here to be, oh, you need to go CO2 laser over CNC milling machine. No, this video is here to help answer and give you some of the right questions to ask before you start down the rabbit hole of picking out what type of CNC machine do you want. 
And we haven't even talked about CNC plasma, uh, fiber lasers, diode lasers, anything like that. What If you're going to take anything away from this video, take away this. What kind of materials do you want to cut? What kind of projects do you want to make? And then find the machines that are right for you and your projects. So, if you need to, make a list of the things you want it to do or you want to do. Then, go and do your research. Find out which machines are going to suit you best or what combinations of machines are going to suit you best. It took me about three, four months of just researching and looking into what I wanted to do before I pulled the trigger on getting the CO2 laser. And I'm happy with my decisions. I have no regrets, just as I have no regrets on the milling, CNC milling machines I have. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Remember, if these videos are helping you and you like them, hit that subscribe and bell button to keep up with all the latest videos. Hey, and if you like this video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. You're not going to hurt my feelings. And until next time, remember, keep making stuff.